Hello everyone and welcome to the Sedona International Film Festival. I am Tanya June Moore here with Mira Bank with The Only Real Game. Welcome to Thank Sedona. You. Um, you, you have been here before. I have. It's been some time and it's great to be back. How does it feel being in Sedona? Well, it's um, staggeringly beautiful. <laughs> um, and um, certainly this community, from my experience with the festival, is one of the most um, can-do and enthusiastic and the level of involvement of the community with the festival is uh, unprecedented. It's really terrific. Oh, thank you. We really yeah. work hard. The whole group here really works hard to make the filmmakers the priority because a festival like this, is that's really what it's about. Without people like you making films for us to see, we wouldn't exist. We're happy to be here. So, <laughs> um, we were talking a little bit earlier about your movie. It's a, a documentary, a full-length documentary. Um, give us the background, Tell, give us a little synopsis of what it is, and then we'll delve in a little deeper. Okay. Um, the Only Real Game uh, is a story about baseball, but it's, in a way, a story that brings us back to the heart of the great American game, um, because it's set in a, really, a war zone in northeast India. And this is a place where people have been attached to our game, our national pastime, really since the Second World War. And uh, one of the things that this game means to them is hope, um, joy, a kind of shared passion, and in many ways uh, a way of transcending the difficulties of their everyday life. And uh, the story of how we got there is perhaps something we'll talk about later, but... Um, you can elaborate now, we'd love to hear. Okay. Um, People, I, I had been in India a number of times before. I'd been fortunate to work there before, but colleagues of mine, one, an American woman who spent many years in India. She was married to someone in the diplomatic service. And the other, uh, a man whose family is from Manipur. His grandfather was the last king of Manipur. He had not been back in many years. And when, for various reasons, they both were there, uh, uh, the woman, Muriel Peters, who's a big baseball fan, realized that there were people there playing baseball. And she'd heard a rumor that this was the case before she left. And I said, if that's true, it's a movie. So they came back, and in fact, they had seen great baseball while they were there. And people came to them and said, we love this game. Can you help us? Wow. So they formed an organization called First Pitch. And they turned to me and said, would you make a film about our efforts there? How long and did it take to put this all together? On and off, and I did many other things at the same time that I was making this film, but um, about almost six years. And part of the reason is that until about 18 months ago, Manipur was a restricted area. So not only was it incredibly difficult for foreigners to get in, the, the visa applications and the process was very complicated, but for Indians, it's as if you, who live in Sedona, needed to get a special government clearance to go to New York. So even other Indians, although this is part of India, couldn't travel there freely. The source of this is that at one time, Manipur, which is where the story is set, was an independent kingdom. And then it was a kind of princely state under the British Raj. And at the end of the Second World War, when the Brit British left India, there was a very hasty reallocation of those princely states somewhat by vote, but in Manipur people contested that vote. And so there's been a separatist movement uh. in Manipur since the late 40s, early 50s. So this has been going on for decades. Generations. Generations. Yeah. And it's tied to this freedom that they get from playing an American sport. When our troops were there, uh, and in the film there are two fabulous World War II vets who did something called flying the hump, which was flying the Himalaya to resupply Claire Chennault, the Flying Tigers, our allies in China. They, when they weren't in the air, cleared baseball fields and played baseball. And so that was the first contact with baseball wow. in Manipur. And the game, in some form or other, has stayed alive since then. And that's the source of their passion for this game, um, which represents, in many ways, 
the best in America to people there. Do the, I mean, you've been there, you've done the film. Are these generations, like the younger generations, is their dream to get here to America and play ball? For some people. Mm -hmm. um, uh, there is in our film a very touching story of the attempt to get several young players um, connected to a program very eager to have them in New York City, Harlem RBI, Harlem RBI um, and that's a, a fabulous baseball program in Harlem. Only one person got here. You know, he was a man who was a little bit older and had children and a job, um, but you really have to see the film to understand mm -hmm. how that happened. But for some of them, the passion to come here and the dream to play in the major, major leagues is very real. For other people, baseball more represents a way to keep their kids away from guns, drugs, mm -hmm. all of the troubles that are going on in Manipur, and also a way to kind of build a sense of unity. Um, one of the things about the separatist movement in Manipur is that it's, it's also tainted by many other things, trafficking in drugs and guns and um, extortion. It's a very poor place. There's very little opportunity. So it's like anywhere else in the world. These, these political agendas often devolve into other things. So for, for particularly for women there, baseball represents an amazing safe haven for their children and a way to bring kids together in something that's cohesive, disciplined, and joyful. And you were saying earlier that women really are involved, like they're the coaches, they're playing. Can you explore that a little more and what that was like because they have such a, a patternistic society? Yes. The, uh, another aspect of the story is that Manipuri women are very special <clears throat> in all of India in many ways. And uh, part of what they've developed is something that's almost like an I am Spartacus, uh, nonviolent uh, peace initiative in which many women get together and do actions. They patrol the streets at night with torches so that they're shining light in the streets and their children aren't kidnapped or taken away by the uh, military looking for separatists. Um, they have a very strong presence in Manipuri economy. They have their own markets where they weave the cloth, they grow the food, they make the toys and bangles, they catch the fish and then they sell these things and control the money. But they're also great sports people and women are very talented in sports in Manipur and they have really taken it upon themselves to make sports an initiative uh, on their own. And for some of them it also represent, represents a future opportunity in coaching and having jobs in the schools. They care enormously about education and schooling. And they feel if they can get baseball uh, on the state agenda as something that's taught in schools, they can become coaches and train children and, and earn a livelihood that way. That's fascinating. Um, where can we catch this movie. I mean, where, I mean, other than the film festivals, obviously, um, can they see the, the trailer on the internet? Yes. Please go to our site, uh, onlyrealmovie.com. No, the, just onlyrealmovie.com. And we open next week at the Harkins uh, Camel View in Scottsdale. So we're in Harkins for at least a week from the 7th uh, to the 14th of March, possibly two weeks. Later, there will be openings in New York, L.A., around the country, and we'll also be at the Palm Beach Festival in April. But so. this next week, it, it coincides with spring, spring training, training. Yeah. which is pretty fabulous. Yes. And I, that's um, that's really cool. We're very excited, and I'll be back. We'll be doing uh, live uh, Q&As at, uh, at the Harkins in Scottsdale, and uh, other members of our production and MLB team will probably stay there through the week. So we're very excited about that, and Arizona is a great state for us to be in right oh, now. Oh, wonderful. Well, give the web address one more time so all of our viewers out there can, can find the trailer at least. Onlyrealmovie.com, and we're very easy to find, and there's masses of great film material on our site, and uh, also material with our Academy Award winning narrator Melissa Leo, who's been a great friend to this she's project. Fantastic. And yeah, she really walks cool. on water. She's just great. She's a really cool lady. Yep.
Well, thank you for sitting here with me this morning. Uh, everyone out there in the Webiverse, go out and, and check out the website, and we'll catch you next time. Thank you so much.